This is the GMBN Tech Essentials Series, our one-stop guide for looking after and maintaining your bike yourself at home. With a few basic tools and some basic instruction, it's really easy to take care of your bike. And of course, this means you're gonna be able to spot all those things that might be costly repairs down the line. Today's video, we're gonna look at setting up a suspension fork, which is very easy and just requires you to follow a few basic rules. Here's how you do it. So first things first, you need to know a little bit about the suspension fork on your bike. Now, externally, they visibly look very similar. They're based off a few different components. There's the lower leg, the upper leg, and then of course, what's inside. Every fork has a spring of some kind. It will either be air or it will be a coil spring. A coil spring literally is a wound steel spring, which will be housed inside one of the legs of the fork. If yours is an air spring, which is more than likely because most forks are these days, there's a variety of different ways you can adjust this. On every suspension fork, there will be some form of compression damping and rebound damping. Rebound damping, as you might figure out, it basically controls the rate at which the fork extends after you've had an impact and the fork has compressed. Compression damping obviously helps control that compression, so basically it helps absorb the shock. Compression dampers do tend to have an adjustment to help lock the fork out, which resists the fork working to your body weight. This can be really helpful on sections of road or perhaps if you're climbing. But the most important thing on any suspension fork is getting your sag set up correctly. Now the sag is making sure the fork is sprung correctly for your body weight. And not only is that important so the fork can actually work against your body weight, but also so the fork can extend into holes in the ground. So the fork both has to support you and obviously it has to work in two directions there. It's really important to get your fork set up with correct sag from the beginning and this will make your fork perform as best as it can in all situations. Now this particular fork is a RockShox fork, so on the left hand leg, which is this one here, that is where the air spring is housed. There's a cap on the top and underneath is a valve. To operate this, you need to have a shock pump. On the right hand leg, you have your damping. Always on the bottom is the rebound, which has a red dial. It's the same across many brands. On the top is your compression adjustment. This has a blue dial. And again, that is the same. It's a pretty universal thing on most bike brands. Blue for compression, red for rebound. So in order to get your suspension fork set up, you're gonna need a few things. So first things first, you're gonna need a shock pump. Next up, you're gonna need to be in your riding kit. And of course, the last thing you're gonna need is your riding bag. And of course, all the heavy stuff that you're likely to take when you go riding. What I mean by that is things like a water bottle, a hydration bladder, if you're carrying it in a bag, any tools, anything that really will affect your body weight on the bike. Now you might find it helpful as well to do this near a tree or a wall or something you can lean up on because it's the sort of job that you're going to need to sit your elbow out and get an indication of your body weight on the fork itself. Now first things first, before you actually set that sag you need to make sure that the damping is not going to interfere with that. So in particular, that means making sure your compression damping is not closed or turned on. So fully unwind it, which means turning it off. The same applies to rebound. You wanna make sure you unwind this all the way so there's no damping affecting your sag setup. So now that we have no damping applied to the fork itself, it's time to get some air into the fork to suspend it to your body weight. Now in this particular case, there's a chart on the back here and just looking at it, my body weight is between 180 and 200 pounds. So they recommend between 95 and 105 PSI. So I'm gonna start at 95 and work it out from there. What we're looking to achieve is between 20 and 30% sag. There is no right and wrong with this. This is really down to what you want the fork to feel like. 30% sag, the fork will feel more supple and it'll feel more controlled for you. 20% sag, it'll feel slightly firmer and maybe less so, but some people like that. But don't fear, if you haven't got a fork like this one with the chart on the back, there's gonna be a couple of links in the description below this video, linking you through to the RockShox website and the Fox website, which are two of the most common options, and they have those charts online. So now it's time to take your shock pump and connect it to the valve on the top of your fork. Now do take care with this because the threads can be quite easy to strip. So just make sure that you just get it on nice and straight. Should go on very easily and screw it all the way in. And you should see some sort of reading on the shock bump. As you see on mine here, it's under 60 pounds there, so it's quite soft. So I'm looking to go to about 95. So 
So there we go, we're just hovering over 90 PSI there. So that's a good base setting to start with. So now this is the bit where it can be a little bit tricky when you're doing this on your own, hence why I'm stood next to a tree. So the idea is you balance on the tree, you would bounce up and down to see how much sag you're getting, let it settle, push that O-ring down until it sits on the fork and you want to carefully get off the bike and that gives you an indication. However, it's much easier if you have a friend. Hey, friend, I have a friend now. So friend will helpfully hold my handlebar so I don't have to do this. And then if you bounce up and down on there for me a bit, in fact, I can do that bit. And then simply put the O-ring down and then I would step off the bike. And as you can see, we've got in fact, 25% sag, which I'm actually happy with. I think that's about right. But that is exactly what you're looking for. So as you can see, I've got just over 25%, which may or may not be the perfect setting for me, but this is a great place to start. You're never really gonna know for real until you get out on the trail and see if you like it. As I said, some people like a fork to feel slightly firmer, so maybe nearer 20%, and others like it a bit softer, nearer 30%. That's entirely up to you, but it's a good place to start. But before you move on to the next step, don't forget to put that air cap back on. It just makes sure you're not gonna get any mud or anything in that valve. Keeps everything nice and tidy. So you've got the air spring dialed in on your fork so the sag is set up correctly. Next thing to do is adjust the rebound and compression damping. So on this particular fork, it's a RockShox fork, you can go on an app called the Trailhead which is part of the RockShox program, you can put your body weight in and it gives you a base setting from it off. So in my case, it's 95 PSI, which is roughly what I put into the fork. And they say minus six clicks of rebound. So they say minus six clicks, that means from fully closed. So at this point, I would fully close the fork. Give me a second to get through all the clicks. There we go. So now it's time to do six clicks, open. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that is the recommended base setting for my body weight. Nice and easy to get started. What you're looking for is a fork that reacts fast enough that the fork feels supple and will absorb all of that shock. But it also needs to be slow enough that it's not too bouncy. Too slow, it will feel sluggish. Too fast, it will feel like a pogo stick. All about finding that happy medium. If you get your good base setting, you get out, you hit the trails, then you will start finding what works best for you. Now, the final adjustment to make before hitting the trails and personalizing your base settings is to get that compression sorted out. Now, on most forks these days, the compression on the top really is to make the fork resist moving to your body weight when, say, out of the saddle and climbing. So you might wanna feel like you wanna lock it out. This is very much an adjustment you can make on the fly. Simply put, if it feels too harsh, you have too much on. If it's not doing enough, you don't have enough on there. Fairly simple adjustment to make. Of course, there are more complicated versions or more expensive forks that have two adjustments, but that's something we're gonna be dealing with in our Suspension 101. So make sure you look out for that on GMBN Tech soon. Now you might have noticed I didn't mention setting up a coil sprung fork. Now these days it's not so common to find coil sprung forks unless it's more of a high-end fork. But if you do have a more of a budget conscious fork that is a coil sprung, there's really only a couple of things you can do to set them up to your body weight. There will be a preload dial on there and it can slightly adjust the firmness or the softness of the fork, but only within a very small amount. Simply put, if it's too soft, you're gonna need a firmer spring or if it's too hard, you're gonna need a softer spring. And that essentially is how you set up that sag. Air springs are king, they're here to stay. So there you go, that is the basics of setting up your suspension fork. Don't forget, this is just your base settings. You will find in time as a rider, you're gonna start learning what feels best for you. You might want a harder fork, a softer fork, a slower fork, faster fork. That's all for you to go and find out out on the trail. That's the fun bit. For a couple more videos, click down here if you wanna know how to install a suspension fork to your bike. Again, it's a fairly simple process, just requires a few tools. And for the rest of our essential series, click up here. As always, click on that round globe to subscribe to GMBN Tech. We love having you here. Help us get to 100,000. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. 